And you're uh, you're packing heat now, huh? It's a Red Ryder BB gun. Jeffrey, put that thing down before you shoot your eye out. Welcome, friends. We're back at it again. Quantum Leap, the revival series 2022, whatever you want to call it. Season 2, 2B, I guess they're calling it, all the way up to episode 9. This one's entitled off the cuff. Now there will be some spoilers ahead and I do want to touch on the new day in the new time. If you weren't aware that the show is airing at a completely different slot than it had prior, well now you are aware. I've done a video on that and I don't really think that the promotion for this change was really well done. I'll give my thoughts on that a little bit later but I do want to touch on the actual episode. I thought the overall storyline and premise of this episode, the leap part at least, was pretty fulfilling. I enjoyed it. It was sort of a a pseudo uh, oh, 80s or 90s type storyline where the science and the, the way they get out of problems didn't really make as much real world sense, but it was just a fun time. It was uh, quirky characters in a fun situation that didn't ring very true, but it was kind of an A-team or MacGyver-esque sort of situation where they cobbled together a little bit of science to solve their problem. The story was set in 1970. I've tried to record this three times. I keep calling him Sam. Ben. We're following Ben in this show, not Sam Beckett. And he leaped into a bounty hunter and had to uh, kind of bring this not Paul Rudd character to justice. That all kind of goes off the rails. But what really sticks out in this episode, and I suppose this is going to be the main rallying point for the rest of the season, is that this isn't a self-contained leap. It looks as if Every single leap for the remainder of this season until things are resolved is going to be the rest of the interactions Ben is having with Hannah. And I have to imagine it's probably going to have a bittersweet ending where the last leap she's on her deathbed or potentially he never gets that chance to say goodbye to her. The last leap he finds out she's been dead for six months or something and she left him a note or something. But I'll get back to that because there's a lot going on with the Hannah stuff. The overall storyline in the 19. 19- 70s era being chased by the bad people trying to get this uh, con man type character off the hook for crimes he actually did commit. That was a little interesting. It was morally dubious. I know he fulfilled the purpose of the leap. He kind of changed people's lives for the better. He had the real bad people come to justice, but he kind of let this shyster character off the hook. And that's another in a kind of growing list of Ben not doing the 100% correct thing in these leaps. And I am here for this. I do like that choice. I don't think the show is necessarily explicitly stating that this is what's happening, but it seems like season two, ever since the all the Addison stuff, the three-year time jump, all that stuff happened, Ben is a little bit more of a loose cannon and not doing things by the playbook. But it is worth noting this is going on, and I'm wondering if these changes to history outside of the normal, you know, by the book, setting things on the right path are going to have ripple effects to other things, changes in continuity, whatever you want to say in the future. And the fact that we haven't referenced another evil Leaper, Martinez, Leaper X, all of that stuff from season one, really at all, seems as if that plot has either been put on the back burner or they're just trying to drop it and go with this new plot of the the time stuff. So let's get to the Hannah of it all because it definitely seems like her storyline is going to be forwarded in each and every episode until it comes to a conclusion probably in the finale of this season, although they're airing two episodes, the final two episodes of the season back to back. So maybe it will actually happen in the penultimate episode. So they're not meeting out of order Order, like something like Doctor Who does with River Song. They are meeting in order. It's just heck of a long time between leaps for Hannah. And this leads me to something I thought I caught in this episode. It's probably not the case because the timeline doesn't quite work out, but it still leads to some interesting questions about the character and the nature of Hannah as a person. So the last time we left them, they were in Cairo, and they were deeply in love. They wanted to share all their stories with each other. They were going to wait for each other. They were going to set up this cross-time relationship, this cross-time whatever you want to call it. In this episode, Ben is directly leaving that Hannah has lived nine years, she said. So I looked into this. Nomads, the last episode, was set in May 1961. This episode is set in April 1970. Nine years. 
Now, she mentions in this episode, and we actually directly meet her son in this episode, who was played by a 10-year-old actor, but in the episode it was stated he is seven years old. You built a renewable home generator with your seven-year-old? So I tried to do the math because my assumption in the last episode and here is potentially this kid is a time baby, or whatever you want to call it, a sort of offspring between Ben and Hannah, although would it really be Ben or would it be the character Ben was inside at the time? Not sure how that that works not sure the show knows how that works so i thought you know what this seems awfully close if that kid was conceived in may 1961 and born nine months later that'd be around february 1962 so him being seven in april of 1970 doesn't quite track it's a couple months off for that to really work depending on you know if he's at the beginning of his seventh year or the end of his seventh year. It really would have to be around eight years old for that to work. There's a couple of possibilities. Hannah here specifically stated he was seven to kind of throw Ben off the scent. The writers didn't necessarily work it out 100% or this isn't actually Ben and Hannah's child. If that's the case, this isn't actually Ben and Hannah's child, which it probably isn't, but I am throwing that possibility out there. That means directly after she left Ben in Cairo, after this grand professing of love between each other and they were going to make it work throughout time, within a couple of months she met this new guy, Josh, and they uh, conceived a child because a seven-year-old child had to have been created not that long after Ben leapt out, not even a full year later. So that means she would have left Ben, immediately gotten a relationship with this other guy and had his kid. And that just leads me to feel a little bit odd. Or was she potentially already in a relationship at this time and she didn't share that with Ben? I don't know. This whole episode, she kind of had this grand feeling of you can love more than one person at the same time. Do you think it's possible to love two people at the same time? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, I do. So maybe that fits for her, and maybe that was supposed to be kind of, I was going to say a metaphor, that's not the right word, but maybe it was supposed to also symbolize Ben can be in love with Hannah and Addison at the same time, and Addison can be in love with Ben and Tom at the same time. All of these people are in love uh, with two or more people at the same time. I don't know. But I do want to get back to the main plot line in the modern day story, because that was forwarded a little bit, but that also brings up that problem the series kind of has with the balance between the Leap story and the modern day storyline. And for the most part, all of our modern day characters outside of Addison or on occasion when someone else steps in to be the hologram, they're being completely wasted. Ian has done precious little this season after the couple of episodes that were really based around that uh, shady corporation and that microchip or whatever. Jen has done almost nothing in either season. I really like her actress. I really like her character, but she doesn't get anything to do. And Ernie Hudson being this grand connection between the old and new show and just having this pedigree actor in Ernie Hudson hasn't had much to do outside of that burgeoning relationship with Al's widow, which seems a little icky to me. But, you know, I digress. There's just not much for these modern day characters to do, especially since they seem to have dropped that storyline that was going on with Martine as the evil leaper. And they're not really even touching on the oversight committee or any of these modern day things that were set up the apocalypse. It all seems to be based around Hannah and Ben's relationship and then a subset of that is the Addison and Tom relationship and then the Addison Ben relationship that seems to be the crux of everything right now I do imagine all of these things are tied together though it seems like all of this setup the connections between Princeton Tom and Princeton Hannah in Princeton the weird DARPA program. The way they described it was a little weird to me. They found a section of an old hard drive with some scraps of code that could get Ben home. I have to imagine that has something to do with Hannah or Hannah's son. We'll have to see. Again, I don't think they're actually going down that road. He's probably just going to be Hannah's son and Hannah's legacy. And when she dies, she leaves that work to him. And whether or not that ties into somebody we already know, or it's a, a program that's going on in cross purposes, I don't know. I'm kind of waffling right now. Overall, I enjoyed this episode. I'm just afraid that all of these moves behind the scenes, they're taking these breaks, they're not announcing when and where the show is going to air that effectively, and they're kind of just rushing to the finish line with this newly set up Ben and uh, Hannah storyline, that it seems like that's going to be most of what we get the rest of the season. We have no confirmation we're getting another season, and even if we do, 
Are they going to blow it up and just tell a brand new story in season three? Again, they just dropped Janice this season. They dropped Martinez this season. So I don't know. I really don't know what to theorize on the overarching storyline because it seems like they're just kind of moving in a new direction and not tying things back. I could be wrong. For all I know, in the final episode, we're going to tie into season one and we're going to get Sam back. But I don't think that's likely at this point. What did you think of this episode? What do you think of the state of the show? And are you intrigued to see where we're going? Or are you kind of over this Time Traveler's Wife storyline? Leave all your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe while you're there. Do all those YouTube things. But until next time... Hey, 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 hey. Ah! Ah! Give me that. Careful. You really will. Shoot your eye out with that thing.